21, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilmember Kurtzwell. Um, we'll move on to the roll call this evening. I know Councilmember Richards was having some technical issues. I'm hopeful uh, that he will be able to join us here very shortly. Uh, please remember to state your location after mentioning that you are present. Councilmember Kibble. Here, I'm in the city of South Lyon. Thank you. Councilmember Dill. Present, city of South Lyon. Thank you. Councilmember Walton. Present, City of South Lyon. Councilmember Kurtzwell. Present, City of South Lyon. Councilmember Kennedy. Present, City of South Lyon. Councilmember Richards, um, please remember to state your location after mentioning that you're present. Present in South Lyon at home. Mayor Pelchat is also present and at the City of South Lyon City Hall. <clears throat> uh, we will move on to the approval of the minutes, March 22nd, 2021. Council Member Kibble. Uh, about a third of the way down on page six, uh, it states, Councilman Kibble stated he is fine either way. The problem will be if there is enough conflict to, that you can't come to consensus on someone being appointed, chances are there will be tension as it goes forward until the election and it needs to be added. So you better buckle up. And then mid page of page six, Councilman Kibble stated the issue isn't with this council, it is about how the char charter looks at this and then insert at this issue. Anytime the situation comes up, irrespective of who's on council, mm -hmm. we're trying to fix something that doesn't, and it says fix in the minutes and it should say exist right now. That's all I had, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Kibble. Council Member Kennedy, go ahead. I'd like to go ahead and move the minutes as amended. Support. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the minutes? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Move on to the approval of the bills this evening. Councilmember Kennedy? I can go ahead and move the bills. I'll support. Uh, I, have a, I have a question on bills. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Further discussion will go to you, Councilmember Richards. Okay, uh, going through things, I had uh, a number of questions that I can't bring up at a council meeting because I got to clear them with Patricia, I guess, first. But um, if we go to the very last page, the most serious one I'm concerned with is... Uh, where it says the summation of wages paid to the uh, employees uh, payroll reports. Uh, the second one down, it says cemetery, and uh, it says $104,000, unless I'm reading it for police, okay? Okay, maybe I'm, maybe I'm reading it wrong, okay? One, two, three. Would you go? One, two. Tricia, could you go ahead and speak to that for us? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Council Member Richards, yes, that is a uh, cemetery. I'll, next time I'll put a zero there, um, but that should be a blank line. And for police, it should be $104,640.16. Okay, all cleared up. Uh, also on the inside page, just one mention. Uh, I think we need to look at on page, four of six at the towards the bottom it call it says batco corporation batco incorporated um 
sewer and water line locators, uh, eighty-seven eight hundred and seventy-six dollars twenty-seven cents. Uh, I found that bill to have been paid uh, four times, and uh, I'm. Uh, my question is: Is this a purchase or a rental? Or and if it is a purchase, we're purchasing this equipment. Are we still going to be charged by HRC for uh, f finding the location of the sewer lines and how clean they are? Uh, I hope you can find that. We've done a lot of business with BATCO. I understand that. Uh, I'd just like clarification on this. Patricia, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Council Member Richards, it's listed three times on the invoice GL distribution report because it's listed by account number that that amount was taken from. So it was a, a total bill that was split between three different accounts. So if you look all the way over to the left where it says GL number, it'll show you the different accounts. So that, uh, so I apologize for the confusion, but the way this report runs is that it splits it by the different accounts. Okay, yeah, I see the number. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, uh, this, this question remains, are we buying this equipment or are we renting it or is that the normal fee for their services? I apologize, that would be a Doug Varney question. I don't know if he's available. Okay. Okay, that's all my questions. If you can't, we can put it away until another time. All right, and, and he, you might be able to ask that later too, Councilor Richards. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion on the bills this evening? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Approval of tonight's agenda. Councilmember Kennedy, move the agenda. I support. Motion in Mayor, a Mayor Pelcha, do we have to amend it because there was a, a something that came to us late? I wasn't I, sure if we needed to amend it. I thought there was something in Lisa's email that said that. I don't believe so. Did I, City Clerk Deaton? Go ahead. Um, there was a change in the agenda note, but it was just a change in the account number. Okay. So I don't think you need to amend it for that reason. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sorry. good question. Um, so we have a motion and a second to move the agenda. Do we have any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> we'll move on to tonight's consent agenda on that. Uh, we have for number one, Lake Street Cruise in 2021 and Motor Fest 2021. Councilmember Dill. I'd like to take both of those off and move into a new business. I have some questions and I wanted to talk about some stuff on those. Both of those? Yes, please. So we will make that number three and number four. Um, and with that, I think we just move forward, right? Now that we, we're going to put that on to new our uh, new business. Okay. At this time, we'll open the floor for public comment. Please remember to speak your name and address, and please remember to stick to the two-minute time limit. City Clerk Deaton, you're muted. That's right. I know better. Yep. Uh, we have two people with their hands raised. Um, okay. The first one is Ryan Lair. Okay. I'll go ahead and allow him to talk. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Council. Uh, uh, I have some wonderful news to uh, present tonight. Uh, uh, Last week, I spent an hour and a half cleaning up Paul Baker Park and Reynolds Sweet Parkway and around the police department and behind the police department. Uh, I noticed a lot of trash that needed to be cleaned up. So I took the scooter out and got my uh, little uh, 
uh, uh, fork thing, whatever you want to call it, the little grab hook, whatever. And I cleaned up uh, over one and a half bags of trash. And I wanted to thank all the residents that stopped and 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 thank me for uh, taking the time to do that and clean up their our city. As your ambassador of South Lyon, I and I look forward to keeping our city beautiful and i plan to see you guys all for the uh cleanup uh uh coming up this sunday coming up and um i did mention to larry that the uh parking lot in front of the police station and the fire department is full of trash and mass and debris and uh he has added that to his list i believe Councilman Richards is going to be speaking about the cleanup later in his comments. I'm not entirely sure on that, but um, uh, Larry Ledbetter has added that to the list. So that whole parking lot will be completely cleaned up next Sunday. And that's all I have tonight. And I'd like to thank the public once again for stopping and saying hello and congratulating me. Uh, it was it was a wonderful thing to do and spend my time doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lair. We have one more person with a right hand raised, Linda. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Linda Hyatt up and uh, I'm coming to visit from Senator Jim Runstead's office to find out what's going on in the city of South Lyon. Um, I just wanted to uh, remind everyone that our office is available for phone calls, um, emails, we have a website, Facebook page. Um, we've helped literally, well, I want to say over a thousand people get their uh, unemployment benefits to them over the course of the last year. But uh, we do all kinds of uh, assistance for um, to connect people with agencies um, uh, to help uh, municipalities uh, receive grants or do research. Um, uh, just more things than, than people can imagine. Um, if you have any uh, problems that you need assistance with, um, if you uh, have ideas or if you want to give your opinion um, on some legislation or if you think some legislation needs to happen, if you ever think there ought to be a law, um, give us a phone call. Um, we talk to hundreds of people a week. We're waiting to hear from you. We're available. And um, thank you very much. Oh, I want to I want to say one other thing. Thank you very much to Ryan Lair for being an ambassador and such a great um, uh, a great model for other citizens. Thank you for helping cleaning up South Lyon. And uh, I want to find out uh, if anybody on the council knows where I can get more information about the cleanup this weekend. City Clerk Eaton, is that available on the city website? It is. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> Does that look like that's it uh, for public comment? City Clerk, no, no. thank you. There's no other hands raised. Okay. Um, thank you uh, to Senator Runstad's office and Linda, who does a great job of staying in touch with us out here. We're very fortunate. Uh, a lot of our, many of our representatives that represent us are make sure to get out here and stay in touch and that's appreciated. So thank you to her. Um, we will at this time close public comment. And we'll move on to the discussion of downtown with our DDA director, Nate Mack. All right, thanks, Mayor Pelchat. Uh, the DDA board met last Thursday. Um, and during the meeting, there was discussion uh, regarding an opportunity for recovery planning for the downtown with the National Main Street Center. Uh, it was my intention to get the date set up for that planning. However, um, the Oakland County contacted me the day before the meeting and said to hold off because they're still uh, finishing their budget and working out funds for that. Uh, other items that came up at the meeting was discussion of the variance request at 222 Lafayette Street. Uh, we approved a new volunteer for the promotions committee. Um, all four of the newly formed DDA committees have met and have been productive. Um, I think one of the more exciting things that the design committee is working on is kind of sprucing up the alley between 12 Kitchen Elves and Bob's Barbershop. 
Uh, we're going to be meeting there on Wednesday to kind of look at the space to visualize it better. And uh, I'm going to be working on cleaning it up and, you know, maybe putting some stain on the planners just to make them look a little more inviting. Uh, and we're going to be, you know, just making that look a little bit better for people so that they, they feel more welcome when they're coming down there. Uh, through the promotions committee, we're also looking to offer an internship to a high school student in journalism class to help manage our Instagram account. So I'm putting together an application for them and then members of our promotions committee are reaching out to their contacts in the high school uh, to see if there are any students that may be interested. And we're thinking the length of the internship, depending on the interest that we have, will be about one month. Um, so going off of that, um, I know in my, in my report last week, I mentioned that I was developing a business retention and expansion, expansion survey. However, I'm going to hold off, I'm still developing it, but I'm going to hold off on conducting it until I hear back from Oakland County, because part of that recovery planning process, uh, you do a survey getting, you know, your residents' attitudes and businesses' attitudes on how things are going for them currently. Uh, the farmer's market is set to open May 1st. Um, we've received some additional guidance from the Farmer's Market Association that I'll be going over to ensure we're in compliance with all of the state regulations. Uh, but with that being said, we've been successful obtaining sponsorships and we're really looking forward to a safe and successful market season. I believe we have food trucks set up for every farmer's market date and we have a lot of returning vendors from last year. Um, for the survey that the, the task force sent out, uh, I believe uh, an update from the report when it was sent out, we're at 24 responses now. So we're getting some good feedback from businesses kind of gauging how they feel the task force is doing and how we can continue to assist them. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, and regarding the flowers, so I've touched base with Donahue Farms. We're all set to go with the flowers. Um, they said that they potentially could be ready before Memorial Day. However, we'll have them for sure by Memorial Day. So um, we're all set there. And if there's any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Council Member Dill, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a question and then I'll have a little bit of follow-up depending on what we talk about. But um, so I, my question is on ladies' night. Um, so I don't think that you've been around for a ladies' night before. And I know we talked about this earlier, but ladies' night has become really popular and there's it just tons of, of women come for this and there's men there too. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I spoke with several businesses about um, that are on the DDA about how they're going to do um, protocols and things like that. Um, my concern is just that I've been involved in these and it's very difficult um, without COVID to get in and shop and, and uh, you know, get, get around all the businesses. And I think now with the protocols, um, the lines that will be outside could be pretty extensive. So I know that I, I asked you this and I've asked Paul before, if there is some way that we can shut down the street and make ladies night um, more open so that we can do, so that the businesses can still get the same kind of business that they've got and that they can get some of the, you know, the, um, some of the restaurants can maybe get some more seating or something that we can do to, to open that up a little bit more and make it more, um, you know, so it's not frustrating for the people who want to get into the businesses and it's not a headache for the businesses who are trying to maintain uh, social distancing. So I yeah. guess that's all. We have okay. On. So yeah, I will reach out to the Oakland County Road Commission and see if we can't get, get something done for the, for the event. Well, I was just, I know, um, Paul, we have talked about that before. Um, and I know you were concerned with thinking that there might be too many times that we shut down the road. And I know that when I talked to you about it before, you said, well, there's only so many times we can shut down the road in a year. Um, and that there's some issues with, um, with police or liability and things like that. So I'm wondering if those are all still concerns as well. Yeah, they're definitely still concerns. You know, we are worried about rerouting of traffic during rush hour on a Friday evening coming downtown and how we get the, all those people around the street because it's not just between Whipple Street and you know 10 Mile. We're talking about shutting north, south, east, west. It's very difficult to get four hours of the road to be shut down and getting people rerouted through subdivision streets. You know, that's something that we can look at to find out ways that we can try to help that out. You know, with the first year or three years ago, we shut down um, East Lake Street between Wells and Pontiac Trail. 
And that really didn't, you know, pan out. There really wasn't the gathering that we thought there would be there. We had tables that were set out there, but it wasn't really used. Um, but with COVID concerns, it's something else that we can still talk about. And we'll try to make, we'll try to have those discussions very quickly and include the police department and fire department as well. Uh, I was, and I was just wondering, I mean, I know that we are talking tonight about the um, cruising and the motor fest and it seems, and those were just on a consent agenda that we were all going to just vote for. Um, so I'm just interested to know why those don't seem to be as much as a concern as ladies night. Seems. Well, the one show, one event is, you know, is, is much bigger, but the other one is just weekly and it's just on East Lake street, you know, in Wells in that area. So it's not shutting down North, North and South Pontiac trail. That's, that's the real difficulty that we have for rerouting traffic around downtown. Um, but, but, you know, but motor fest is right. Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay, we're, so we're, I would just, we're, I'm we're just asking. We're talking about that day, but I believe that is on a Saturday. That's not on a Friday during the day. So let's, there's a difference between rush hour and sh setting something down during Saturday, but we can certainly talk about that and obviously get the uh, both uh, public safety people participating regarding those discussions tonight too. Great. So I was just asking if we could give it some of the same consideration. I would appreciate it. I know there's some differences. So that's all. Thank you. Councilor Wald. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Nate, when you talked about flowers, that did that include the memorial and public park and downtown, or what all does that include? Uh, public or park and downtown, I believe. So you did not add the two additional pots for the memorial? I didn't, but I can add those. Okay, I think we talked about that at a past meeting recently. Okay. I will make a note of it and I'll call, I'll call them tomorrow and, and add those to you. Thank you. Yep. That's Mayor Kurtzwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Nate, I just wanted to let you know that uh, that track of land that is uh, downtown and it's uh, where the architectural firm is. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that owner and he has offered to allow the city to explore um, options with him in using that property for D, for a DDA function, like on a Friday night, like maybe okay. to put a, like what they do in Ann Arbor, like just to put somebody there playing a guitar or you know some street music or something like that. Uh, the only thing he would ask is that the city indemnify him um, on an insurance policy. But if you're interested or if the DDA is interested, give me a call and I have his contact information. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a call. Yeah, Sounds great. Thank you. Council Member Kibble? Yes, I was, uh, I was wondering, I saw that 110 Detroit has sold again and, um, or is up for sale, I should say. And I was wondering how that's going to impact the timeline of, of what our reaction is going to be as far as trying to get something moving in the right direction? Um, I believe it has sold. It's up for so, sale right now. Okay. Yeah. It's a uh, cash only $169,000 for what's oh. there. Okay. So um, I'm sure that that's, that's already a bump up from what it had gone originally. So yeah. uh, that's kind of concerning because it, it sort of leads me to believe that it'll end up being a teardown. It's being marketed as you could live in a historic home downtown. Um, but when you get a buck 69, buy what's there and how much it would cost to refurb that, that's getting pretty pricey. So um, the, the second thing I wanted to ask about was we have those, those little shelters that have been uh, helping people or helping the restaurants during the course of winter and COVID. I was wondering, would that stuff be available, any of those be available uh, in the event that there's inclement weather for uh, ladies night out, could we make those part of the parking lot or maybe even use um, uh, the architect, I forgot his name, Jarrett's, uh, maybe Jarrett would let us have access to park a couple of them on that open lot. So 
Um, so, just something to consider at least. Yeah, so we would want to avoid groups of people from different house, households gathering in that small of a space. Well, that's true, yeah. So I don't think um, I'd wanna use them for that purpose during the event, but we do have them available to us when the restaurants no longer are using them to, you know, once we get out of COVID, if we want to use them for a warming space for an event in the future or something like that, we mm -hmm. can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I actually, I, I'm not very <laughs> COVID uh, savvy. I, I pretty much have been staying away from most of it. So, yeah. okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep, you're welcome. If you know, if you find out anything about Detroit street though, I'd really like to know because if there are some, something that we could do to try to entice anything about that, It'd be really helpful to try to save that building. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Anyone else have anything for Nate tonight? All right. Thanks, Nate. That was a great update. Thank you. Move on to the fire chief report and Chief Vogel. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Thank you. As I look at the list of people on the Zoom, apparently I've cloned myself three times. So <laughs> you guys get three of me tonight. Um, One's enough. Yeah. Uh, so we have started flushing the hydrants again. Um, so those, if you see the fire truck in your neighborhood, you might see some uh, red water. Um, it's good for the system. It's good for the hydrants. And that's why we do it. Uh, secondly, the rest of the extrication grant equipment arrived next week, last week, excuse me. Um, we're pretty excited about that. FEMA paid for the equipment. And finally, the those of you know that we had another gas leak uh, in Colonial Acres. Um, I have invoiced the vendor for Xfinity both times. First time we were there for two hours. Uh, last week, we were there for three hours. So we did invoice. Uh, there were some questions about that. Um, it appears both times that they hit lines that were marked. So that's why I felt justified in the invoicing. So that's all, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Anyone got anything for Chief? Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. Chief Vogel, did that, uh, the invoicing, that included man hours uh, as well as equipment hours that were also on site? Yeah, so uh, I'll use the last. Um, I take the personnel hours times it by three. There is a formula that Patricia has and FEMA has for the two engines in the ladder truck. And I think that's all I build for the second time. The first time we also build because they spilled antifreeze on the road. So I build for the street sweeper the floor dry that we used, the apparatus, and the personnel. Sounds great, Chief. Appreciate it. I think they're done there. I believe that that was their last dig when they hit that line last week. <laughs> they paid enough. <laughs> yeah. I do expect some pushback, but um, I feel confident in uh, the, the city charter that we should have a strong case for collecting. News, thanks. Yep. Well, even if we we do stumble a little bit and don't get the full boat, I, I like us putting pressure on people that they have to perform properly. So that's helpful. I was wondering, did uh, did the fire department have an access to the Detroit uh, aerial that you were hoping to be able to experiment with? So I think Weir is on the call. Um, that is in our future. We thought we had a lead on one to go see down in Indiana, but we found out that that was not exactly what we needed to see. Um, I still expect Weir and his committee to go out to Nebraska sometime in the future, May, maybe June, I'm not sure. That would be a question for him. And I still confirm that that truck, the demo will be here in May and I will send out an invite and I hope everyone can come and uh, see the truck, play with the truck. Um, that, that We were told that we are the first stop when it leaves the factory. Terrific. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Kurtzwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Um, also, uh, Chief Vogel, with respect to the chargeback, I think it's important for the uh, contractors to realize that when they disrupt, like they did with the gas lines, it takes away resources from the community. I mean, you're being pulled out of the community. Several uh, firefighters are being pulled out of the community. Uh, some of our equipment is pulled out of the community, and particularly at a time where uh, you've had an incredibly busy uh, year. So I think they need to understand that uh, they're pulling very valuable resources out of this community when they do something like that. So I, I, I sure hope they don't argue with the chargebacks. Well, I hope not either, but I, it, it happened before when they were doing the same project three years ago in uh, Trotters. Um, what really was frustrating about this incident, the latest one was, it was so close to the homes. We had to evacuate four sets of buildings and it was very challenging. Luckily, every resident was very helpful. You know, I've learned in my years that if we worry about the four Ps, purse, pills, pet, and phone, these people will evacuate. So I was able to get a hold of the phase five clubhouse and I think they felt comfortable going there and that's where we put them and they stayed there for three hours and they were all very friendly. I, I tried to keep them updated on, uh, you know, how long it took them. I think they might've been out of their place for four hours actually, because when Mishkan got there after three hours, they kind of took over and I, I think they, I think so. I think they were evacuated for four hours. Anyone else have anything for Chief Vogel this evening? Thank you, Chief. We'll move on to the police chief report and Chief Sovic. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's get one thing this evening. Uh, I just wanted to say uh, what an outstanding job I think the city manager, Paul and Patricia did uh, in preparing our budget. Uh, I know I've had several meetings and I've had pre-discussion meetings and pre uh, everything meeting. And I know from a law, law enforcement perspective, a lot of times the execution really depends on how well you prepare. And so I think they just did a, a fantastic job preparing this, uh, preparing the budget and also the, the physically the packet that they provided for us. But uh, I think it really showed in the uh, the budget workshop meeting how well that they were prepared. So uh, to Paul and Patricia, uh, just a great job on that. And um, uh, it just seems to be getting smoother every year after year. So uh, well done on that. Thanks, Chief Sovic. Does anyone have anything for Chief Sovic this evening? All right, great. Um, tonight, we do have a special recognition for our police and fire and first responders that I'm going to read here. <clears throat> On March 24th at approximately 6 p.m., South Lion firefighters and police were dispatched to the 1100th block of Polo Drive to investigate an unresponsive 59-year-old female that was not breathing. Upon arrival, South Line police officers located the individual on the ground and quickly determined she was not breathing and were able to find a pulse. Officers were not able to find a pulse, excuse me. Officers immediately began rendering life-saving measures, which included CPR, venting, and deploying an AED. Officers administrated one shock with the AED. Firefighters, along with Huron Valley Ambulance personnel, quickly applied a Lucas chest compression device and continued CPR. Within minutes, the victim's pulse was restored and she began breathing on her own. HVA, along with South Lion firefighters, transported the woman to a local hospital. Since the incident occurred, the individual has been released from the hospital and is recovering at home. Tonight, we recognize South Line Police Officers Sergeant Baker, Officer Tominick, and Officer Walton, along with South Line Firefighters Deputy Chief Weir, Lieutenant Conrad, Firefighter Hopkins, and Firefighter Shipley for their quick response and heroic actions. <clears throat> Incredible. Um, and if anyone has anything that they'd like to add to that, um, let me just say it never gets old um, getting notes from our community or a press release like this that explains to people in the community what exactly our first responders are doing and capable of. 
Councilmember Dill. I just wanted to say thank you and and note that on top of everything else that our first responders have had to deal with this year that seem so different in the last four months that they've had to deal with um, that I've things I've never seen happen in our city before. Um, and I just uh, really appreciate all that they do and that they that we don't um, have the same kind of situations that you see around um, the country sometimes with uh, community and and uh, police and uh, you know in conflict. I just really like that everyone's working together and I really appreciate the work that they did to save this woman's life. I want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councilmember Dill. Great comments, Councilmember Kibble, and then I'll come to you, Councilmember Kennedy. I was just uh, just thinking that Lucas chest compression devi device, is that getting used as often as you had anticipated? I would say more than I thought. Is that right? We used it at that call that we speak of. It was used this weekend. It, 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 it's a game changer. I'm truly happy that we received two on a grant and it's probably in my years, I have not seen a tool that's been as made as such a difference to the fire service like I've seen the Lucas device. It literally has changed how we do CPR. Um, and, and, and the results have been pretty great. And then that call we speak of is, is something that uh, I think it was the team effort, it was the AED and the Lucas and great people. Yeah, everybody seemed to have played a, a strong role in getting that uh, satisfaction. I was just kind of curious about that because it seemed that when you were talking about uh, receiving this equipment that um, you had high hopes that it would end up doing just what you're suggesting it's doing. Um, you know, that and keeping our guys where you don't have to worry about somebody gets fatigued and they're still being able to, to get the benefit of what the equipment can do. So. I'm, I'm really tickled to hear that. So yeah. thank you very much. Councilmember Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to uh, recognize and compliment the uh, firefighters and police officers that were uh, identified in the, uh, in the effort here for their professionalism and obviously the results of their efforts. So job well done. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Walton. I'd like to mirror those comments. And we have an incredible um, team of uh, firefighters and police personnel, and we we net they never disappoint. So thank you for taking the time and the efforts and making sure that this woman and all of our community are safe. Thank you, Councilmember Walton. Uh, Chief, did you have something really quickly? Oh, I'll go after uh, Councilwoman okay. Kurzweil. Thank, yep, thank you, Councilmember Kurzweil. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to uh, also thank uh, the individuals that were involved in this very heroic mission. But I think what's also important is I would like to thank council for funding and providing the financial resources to our fire and police department in order for them to have the training and to have the equipment necessary to save lives and to make our city safe. Those communities that are struggling are struggling because they made different financial decisions than what we're making here in the city of South Lyon. And I think that that result is obvious in paying incredible dividends for the welfare and the safety of the people in our community. So thank you council for continued support for funding of our fire and police departments. Chief Vogel, go ahead. Um, I just want to add to what Councilwoman Kurzweil just said. On, on the behalf of Chief Silvic and myself, I think the support that we both receive from council, the city manager and the mayor really makes our job easier. I think by these results is from a positive react or interaction we have with city, city council and I'm very grateful. And I think I can speak for Chief Silvic that we're very happy that we have the support that we have. I, I'm very grateful, thank you. Yeah, you know, if I can just echo that too, the resources that we have, you know, the not only the AEDs and the Lucas, uh, you know, chest compression device, but then the Oxone that we carry, you know, for overdosing uh, um, people. So uh, you guys have provided us with the resources that we need. Uh, you're like in a small community, 
Uh, if you're in a bigger community, you're not going to you're not going to have the resources available to you, or they might be available, but they're not going to get to you uh, in time. So, uh, the matter of proximity that we have, and as far as being able to reach out to uh, anywhere in the tips of our jurisdiction, along with the resources and the tools that we have, uh, obviously have made us successful in some of these areas. So. Uh, like Chief Vogel said, we do appreciate your support and your resources uh, and your backing. So it uh, means a lot to us. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief Vogel and Sovic. Does anyone else have anything for either of the chiefs tonight? Okay. Thank you guys both very much. Have a good night. Thank you. You as well. All right. We'll now move on to new business this evening. Emergency purchase of new lift station pump for Colonial Acres lift station. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Council. Uh, we had a recent failure at our lift station. Uh, one of our lift stations out in <clears throat> Colonial Acres uh, had a submersible pump failure. Uh, this pump uh, is manufactured by Barnes. It's an uh, explosion proof pump that was pulled and replaced so we could it then be taken to JET for service to see if it was repairable um, for teardown and analysis. We currently have no spare. If there was a failure, uh, which is a very po likely possibility for purchase through JET pump, there was a pump that they had available. That was what led to this being an emergency purchase. Uh, <clears throat> this is a budget expenditure. It can be purchased from uh, for the amount of $5,401.52. That's including a $225 fee for them to analyze the pump that we took to them. Uh, this purchase is being made with equipment miscellaneous account 592.557-977 and the quote from Jet Pump option B1 is attached for review. With also some uh, other items I believe you have in your packet there of the new pump. Councilmember Kivel, go ahead. I was wondering, Mr. Barney, uh, the, the analysis that will take place on the old pump, what do you uh, hope to gain from that? Uh, essentially, they, they'll check it out, they'll tear the whole thing down, and then hopefully that will be a rebuilt pump. But instead of waiting, we want to have one on the shelf here at all times, because we're in case it's not rebuildable, we want to have the one that's brand new to come in and, and actually, in case one were to fail in this few weeks window before this council meeting, we had one ready to go on standby. Well, that's yeah, that certainly makes sense. I was wondering if your, your objective was to, to repurchase it in the event that there were Yes. Rebuildable. Okay. If it, can, if it can be rebuilt, yeah. And whatever parts might be needed, they'll, they'll let us know. Uh, there could be several components on it that are completely failed and they might end up scrapping it for all we know. So, is that a pump that, uh, that's able to be used in any of the other lift stations? Uh, no, it is not, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, we, we have, yeah, I wish we uh, had I wish they were all universal, but yes, yeah, it's right. not like I that. Know. <clears throat> yeah, that's unfortunate. Okay, We're getting there. Thank you. Some, of them, some of them are getting in line, but yeah, they're not all universal, unfortunately. Right. <clears throat> Councilmember Kurtzwell, go ahead. Thank you. Um, two points. Uh, the first one is, in the uh, motion, you are asking for waiver of Section 2-224 of the City of South Lion Code of Ordinances. Um, no advantage mm -hmm. to the city will result from a competitive bid. Could you please provide some groundwork and some factual information for supporting that portion of the motion? Yes. Uh, so the, this this pump, I would like, as kind of aforementioned here by Ms. Uh, Councilmember Kibble, the I would like to have a uniformity with all these pumps. Unfortunately, we don't the, due to the nature of this being a Barnes pump. Uh, the, the configuration of the pump, the wiring, all the everything involved to make this pump work properly would only be that we could use the Barnes pump. And it's unfortunate that we we would have to gut a lot of the upper controls within the lift station to make other pumps work. And the Barnes pumps are not, not to say that they're not a good pump, they are. We're, we're good a few years out of them, I'm sure. But due to the nature of this, there's like a side uh, bracket that's on this pump and then everything that's entailed above the pump that runs the pump, all the, all the wiring and, and everything else, there's no other pump that we can just put in there without doing a lot of other work. And they're, they're side by side. There's two pumps in the lift station and they're both Barnes's. So in this particular lift station, this is basically the only option we have. Uh, may I move forward, Mr. Mayor? Certainly, Council Worker as well. Thank you. Um, I would like to move to waive section 2-224 
of the City of South Lyon Code of Ordinances, approval for purchases or contracts over 2,000, uh, competitive bidding for purchases or bidding over 5,000, because no advantage to the city will result from competitive bidding. I'll second. We have a motion in a second. Do we have any further discussion? City Clerk Deaton, could you please lead us in a roll call vote? Walton? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Dill? Yes. Richards? Yes. Kibble? Yes. Kurtzweil? Yes. Bolchat? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Kurtzweil, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to move to approve the purchase of a new ex, um, explosion proof Barnes submersible pump for the lift station at Colonial Acres for $5,401.52 under line item 592-557-977. I'll second. We have a motion by council member Kurtzwell supported by council member Kennedy. Do we have any further discussion? City Clerk Deaton, could you again please lead us in a roll call vote? Kurtzweil? Yes. Richards? Yes. Dill? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Walton? Yes. Kibble? Yes. Hellchat? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Motion passes. Move on to new business. Number two this evening. Purchase and installation of new stairs and railing for the wet well at the clean water plant, including demolition of the failing and increasingly dangerous stairwell, which is steel and has deteriorated. Sounds like something out of a Resident Evil movie. I don't know if any of you guys have seen it, um, <laughs> but it's spooky. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes, indeed it is. <laughs> you, uh, the stairs to access the well well for the clean water plant have started to fail and are in need of replacement. This is a budgeted item that can be purchased from the capital improvement account 592-557.970. I have met multiple contractors over the past several months. Only one contractor unfortunately has responded uh, and seemed interested in getting in there and replacing these. Uh, for, uh, he had, they have furnished a proposal to make this repair. Included in this proposal by Titus to replace the failing wet well stairs um, the total for the amount with labor and materials comes to $27,700. Um, let's just take a moment to talk about the stairs. These are, these are a fiber grade material. They're basically uh, kind of like a plastic reinforced fiberglass. Uh, there, there's many, many advantages to using this type of stairwell. Um, obviously, what I like most is its corrosive uh, resistance, uh, but it's slip resistant. It's electrically and thermally uh, non-conductive. There's a whole litany of things that make this the right fit for these uh, stairs. Uh, and anytime I go down those stairs, I'm like, mm. it's, it's basically a, the, the, the good joke recently was when it's painted and that's like the most structural integrity on it is to paint it <laughs> after 75 coats and you can't paint it anymore. Maybe we should do something else. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. These are pretty unsafe. So I'm hoping to get the, this kind of a low hanging fruit that I'd like to try to get addressed, obviously. No, I agree. Thanks, Doug. Councilmember Kurtzwell, go ahead. Oh, oh you're virtual. I, I, your virtual hand was up. Yeah, Council I'm going to lower. I'm going to lower that, Your Honor. <laughs> okay, uh, Councilmember Dill, go ahead. Um, I just um, I work for an engineering firm, so this makes me concerned. Um, how safe is that? I'm a little worried about safety. And how soon can you get these stairs? Because if our people are going up and down that, that's pretty scary. Yeah, it's it's pretty scary. Uh, it's pretty safe. It's pretty. The last stair is not safe. The one of the couple of the rungs are in really really bad shape. I would have basically just red tagged it had I been really really concerned. But I I, I check them quite quite frequently. I use them, they, and the staff doesn't go down them all the time all the time. But uh, they they're fairly safe. Uh, and the good news, I did talk to the contractor. I reached out to him today just to kind of get a time frame. Uh, so two to three weeks, they'll have the submittals, everything oh, set. And then uh, less than five to seven weeks, they'll have the stairs here and ready to go. So right, that's wonderful. the game plan anyways. Great, thank you. Yep. Councilmember uh, Kimball, go ahead. I'd like to uh, make the motion that we approve the purchase of the installation of the fiberglass stairs and rail water plant. Wow. 
uh, clean water plant as, as per the proposed uh, provided by, or proposal, excuse me, by Titus for the amount of $27,700 using account 592-557-970. I'll second. We have a motion by Council Member Kivel, supported by Council Member Kennedy. Do we have any further discussion? I have a question. Council Member Richards, go right ahead. Uh, Doug, the one that's the one that's failed. It obviously it's uh, pretty old. Would you hazard a guess at uh, how many years that's been? And was it? Had, did it have stainless steel components, or was it merely cadmium coated uh, uh, mild steel? It looked to me to be just regular steel stairs, Councilmember Richards. Uh, I would say it's probably the age of the plant, but I'm not 100% certain. I wouldn't be shocked if they were 50 years old, but I don't know for sure uh, exactly how old they are. I just know that there's no way in the world we can coat them anymore, and they're in pretty bad shape. So. Oh yeah, I, I I would say so. Yeah, I just wondered the details. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact age of the stairs, other than way older than me, probably. <laughs> Anyone else have anything for Doug before we vote on this? Okay, great. City Clerk Deaton, could you please lead us in a roll call vote? Richards. Yes. Kurtzweil. Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Kibble? Yes. Walton? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Walton. Yes. Oh, say, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, Dilg? Yes. LTAP? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so we're going to move on to number three this evening, which will be uh, the Lake Street Cruise in 2021. Chief Sovic, I'm going to give you the lead on this. You're muted, Chief. Chief, you're still on mute somehow. Yeah, well, there you are. You. Yeah, my technology, yeah, okay. Uh, this is brought me forth by uh, the event organizers, uh, Deb and Doug Cook, who are just uh, awesome to work with, by the way. Uh, on behalf of the Lake Street Cruising Committee, I'd like to host monthly cruising shows. Uh, as you know, in 2020, these, along with the Motor Fest, was canceled because of the COVID concerns. Uh, and I, it looks like that we are slowly coming out of that. But um, uh, before you is the, the agenda note. I have all the, the documentation minus the um, insurance document, which... Uh, in the years past, they have always, um, prior to about 60 days beforehand, they will get it to them. I spoke with Deb Cook today, and she's uh, going to provide that to the PD uh, very shortly, but she assures me it's coming. Um, obviously, we talked about the event protocol, the COVID-19 protocols, the road closures, uh, getting permission from the Oakland County Road Commission uh, to close those roads. Uh, the event's going to take place on Lake Street between Lafayette and Reese, and then certain segments of Well Street. Uh, on the days there um, from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. all except the last date of September 22nd. Well, that would be from 6 to 9.30 p.m. Um, as you'll see in the uh, in the agenda note in the, 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 the parade event application, uh, what I've done is uh, Paul and I had a discussion about passing this around to all the city departments just so just to see if there's any issues or concerns that they may have in, in, besides the PD. So uh, I sent it to the fire department, the DPW and the city hall. Um, they all signed off on it and checked off on it. So if you guys have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Councilmember Dill, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have just a few questions. Um, I think this is, I don't know why I blank on this, but the, some, of the ho some of the street on Lake Street um, that's blocked off is in front of uh, houses, right? Residential houses? Yes. Um, and I know that there were some concerns from those residents before. I just wonder how do we notify them and what accommodations do we make for them? You know, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, what we can do is that normally in the past, we've gotten signatures from those homes. Uh, what I will do is I will go out there and uh, fetch those signatures to make sure it's okay. Uh, they haven't had any issues in the years past, so I just assume, but that's a good point that you bring up, Councilmember Dilg, and I will make sure that that gets done before the event. 
Well, there was, I, I know that there was a concern. I know a woman that was very concerned that she couldn't get to her house um, and had sent emails to um, city council on that before. And I know that there's at least one new resident there. So it, I don't want it to come as a complete shock to them that all of a sudden they can't get sure. to their house. Fair enough, absolutely. So there was that. And then um, for these, for this and the Motor Fest, um, who's responsible for like policing and emergency and things like that? as far as like costs uh, for that, is that just something that we handle or do they pay for some of that? How does that work? No, as far as the policing, we, uh, we, we monitor the situation. We do not have to hire any extra officers there. Uh, it's part of our, uh, you know, the public relations that we will go down there. We will assist with placing the barricades um, and we will just monitor and walk through from time to time throughout the events. And then the last thing, and, I know that it's nearly impossible because I helped work at the farmer's market several times last year, but is there any way to actually enforce these COVID protocols uh, when people are outside and if there's crowds? Um, I mean, is there, I mean, do we really have, a, I mean, do we really think that's gonna happen? <laughs> I mean, well, it all, I guess it all depends on, on how far we actually wanna take it. Um, the, one of the questions and the concerns that we do, well, one of the issues that we have that we're still trying to work through is so many people are actually, uh, you know, they're vaccinated now. And so they're, they're, they're much more protected. Uh, and I, we're not going to get into whether or not you agree or don't agree with that. But I mean, as long as people are, are, are being civil to each other, they're trying to control their, their distance uh, and everything. We'll, we'll be downtown to kind of monitor. And like, I don't want this to fall everything on, on the event organizers because they have enough to do it during the time. But we will be down there to try and, maintain some type of, I guess, normalcy is, is what you, is what we call it. Um, are we asking that they have signs or can they use the ones from the farmer's markets or anything um, to remind people that even though they're outside, that that's a requirement? Uh, yeah, we can actually, uh, I'll, I'll talk to, uh, to Deb and Deb and Doug Cook and see what we can do about that as far as other protocols we have in place, but that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Thanks so much. Yep. That's all. Council Member Kibble, go ahead. And then I'll come to you, Councilor Kennedy. I'm uh, I'm really happy to to see some kind of semblance of normalcy. This will this will take us a long ways towards seeing that there is an end to this at some point. Uh, just as uh, to Lisa's point about the the people that are on that that little stretch of West or uh, East Lake, last couple of years, I think that they had made some accommodations for them to park at the end of the street at Wells so that nobody was blocked out of being able to get in or out of their home. So that was the, one of the accommodations they had made for people that were concerned about wanting to get to the store or whatever it might've been. So- Yeah, there um, was, yeah, they also ahead. parked on the uh, south side of Marie Street there on the side there where the gravel is. Yes, and so correct. we've had some, we had some vehicles and I think there was actually some signage and we let people know that they could park their vehicles there uh, during the event in case they needed to get out for whatever reason. Yes, actually I meant Reese, not, uh, okay. not Wells. So. Sure. Yeah, you're right. That's all I had, thanks. Okay. Council Member Kennedy, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna mention the, uh, the sandwich board signs that you've had in the past there, Chris, and also the fact that uh, we've talked about it before and I think you already have it, is a checklist that you go through to make sure that those aren't overlooked as part of the uh, the prep for those events so that the signs do go up and the residents do have the parking reserve for them. Sure, will do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to say something. Certainly, Council Member Richards, go ahead. Uh, in view of the fact that we're weighing in on this, uh, just like to mention that during the course of this week, uh, I would like to have yourself and, and myself and get together with uh, Lori, uh, attorney Lisa number two Hammoth, okay? Uh, in view of the a number of issues that haven't been brought up really. Um, I read through this Department of Health and Human Services uh, directive from Elizabeth Hertel, uh, the director of the agency and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very worried about a few things uh, regarding this, and uh, I hope we can we hope we can uh, look this over and, and, uh, and get assurances that uh, certain pitfalls or danger zones 
will be avoided in this. I love the car show, but I've got some serious concerns. Let's put it that way. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Councilmember Richards. Councilmember Kennedy, go ahead. I'd like to go ahead and make the motion to approve the Lake Street Cruise In application and resolve that Lisa Dayton City Clerk Treasurer is hereby authorized to make application to the Road Commission for Oakland County on behalf of the City of South Lyon in the County of Oakland, Michigan uh, for the necessary permits to conduct the Lake Street Cruise In on May 26th, June 23rd, August 25th, and September 22nd, 2021, and the related closure, uh, road closures. Lake Street between Lafayette Street and Reese Street, North Wells Street immediately south of the north entrance to the Wells Street parking lot to the alley that extends from South Wells Street to Lafayette Street from 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Except September 22nd, the closure it will begin at 6 p.m. And that the city of South Lyon and the county of Oakland, Michigan will faithfully fulfill all permit requirements and shall save harmless indemnify defend and represent the board against any and all claims uh, for bodily injury and property damage and any other claims arising out of or related to operation authorized uh, by such permits as issued. It was a mouthful. House, House Court. Thank you, Council Member Kibble. Uh, thank you, Council Member Kennedy for, for uh, reading that. <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion on this this evening? City Clerk Deaton, could you please lead us in a roll call vote? Dill? Yes. Walton? Yes. Kibble? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Kurzweil? Yes. Richards? Yes. Pelchak? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion passes. <clears throat> We'll move on to new business, Motor Fest 2021 this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Also, this is, um, it kind of goes along with the Lake Street Cruise in, uh, as opposed to having it on July. They will, know, they will not have the Wednesday evening meeting on July, but they will have a, on July 31st, Saturday, from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., some roads will be closed. Um, Lafayette Street between Whipple Street and Liberty and Lake between Washington and Reese Street with the proper signage. Um, COVID-19 protocols in place, uh, very similar to the Lake Street cruise in. Um, it's like everything there is attached as far as the uh, the outlay and the photos and the, 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 the car show registration and all the applications to the Oakland County Sheriff's Department or actually the Oakland County Road Commission. Uh, and like the Lake Street cruise in, I pass this to the uh, FD, the fire department, the DPW, the city hall as well. Um, they are all on board and we will take a look at some of those issues that we mentioned for the Lake Street Cruising and make sure everything is in place. Councilmember Kibble, go ahead. I had seen that Doug had been in the meeting initially, but um, he's long since left. Does anyone know whether or not um, Oakland County Parks and their trailer, or is there going to be a bandstand set up during the motor motorsport? Yes. Okay. But there's also going to be food trucks as well. All right, that's great to hear. All right, thank you very much. With that, I'll make the motion that we approve this. I'm not reading that whole thing. I'll support. <laughs> thank you. And I'll support of not reading it too. <laughs> thank you. We have a motion by Councilmember Kibble, supported by Councilmember Walton. Do we have any further discussion? City Clerk Deaton, could you lead us in a roll call vote, please? Kibble? Yes. Walton? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Dilk? Yes. Richards? Yes. Ritzwell? Yes. Altac? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion passes. With that, we'll move on to the budget this evening. Oh, yep, that's fine. Uh. Anyone has I just, update, I just want to update you. something, Mr. Mayor, that we will be making the changes based upon the budget meeting that we held last week and the recommendations and rerunning those sheets that are actually changing and giving them to council. We will allow, obviously, at this time at any council meeting for budget discussion if anybody wants to bring anything else up or if anybody wants to email Patricia and I or anything uh, regarding some corrections or something that was discussed or want to bring up again. 
Councilmember Kivel, go ahead. Paul, do you have a sense of how long it'll be before the uh, the updates come? Um, I guess it's probably in about two weeks. If we don't have it by the next meeting, we'll have it before before the next one, so you can review it. Excellent. Thank you. All right. With that, we'll move on to our second public comment. Please remember to state your name and address and either raise your virtual hand or your real hand so our city clerk, Keaton, can see you. Uh, we do have one rant, one, I'm sorry, one hand raised, uh, Ryan Lair. Okay. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Council. I wanted to thank uh, Jim Runstead's office uh, for their wonderful comment uh, regarding my cleanup, and I wanted to thank her and uh, and tell her it's my pleasure to serve my community and uh, keep it as beautiful as possible. And I would also like to thank Chief Sobic and Chief Vogel for their extenuant, wonderful leadership that they have given the command staff to uh, allow all the officers and the uh, firefighters that um, save this lady's uh, life. Uh, it, it just goes to the true testament that we have 100% five-star top-notch public service in our community. And I don't think there's any other community that I have seen that matches ours. And, uh, you know, it may, it may come, the officers may have helped, but the command staff and the leadership is what makes it the absolute uh, top notch uh, that both departments have. And both of the chiefs are, I think we're very lucky to have both of them. Um, extremely lucky. And, uh, and, and to Mayor Palchat, love the Resident Evil thing. That's it. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. City Clerk Dean, did we have anyone else looking to participate in public comment this evening? We do not. Okay. At this time, we'll close public comment and move on to the manager's report. City Manager Zellick, move on. Uh, a couple items I want to update regarding the Parks and Rec Commission that we'll be bringing uh, before City Council. Uh, the Parks and Rec uh, master plan that they have for McCaddy Park for approval and also regarding the purchase of the handicap accessible equipment for that park. Uh, also, we're gonna continue to move forward with our future plans to develop the systematic means to improve our roads, looking at a couple different scenarios for funding those improvements. So expect that at an up upcoming city council meeting. Also uh, for Councilman Richards, if he wants to contact me regarding any of those health concerns or those items regarding the order for gatherings and face masks that was issued on March 31st. I'd be happy to meet with him to talk about some of those items or discuss those items. I don't, not sure if it's really a good idea as far as setting up a meeting between Council Richards, the mayor and the, and the city attorney uh, just yet. I, I think it'd be wise that I go over what some of those concerns may be and to see if we can address those. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Does anyone have anything for City Manager Zelnick this evening? All right, Councilmember Walton, go ahead. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> it was a race. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to make it a race. But oh, no. I just have a quick question that was brought to me. With the COVID numbers going up, um, I was asked if we would consider moving the citywide garage sales back a little bit. I know there's some people I, I offered that they don't have to pay for a permit to have um, garage sales throughout the summer but they feel that they only do it during the citywide garage sale weekend. And they asked if we would move it back maybe a few weeks. So just put it out there. I, you know, I think it's something, you know, potentially to consider this has been highly publicized for the last couple months. We fielded, you know, hundreds of calls on this, people inquiring, you know, people asking questions about that. We can't right. necessarily stop people from having garage sales. Um, it doesn't mean that this council can't necessarily consider trying to restrain uh, many people from holding them or, um, you know, holding those at a later date. Um, we do consider, you know, individuals having, having those garage sales at a later date um, and not charging them for it, I think would be uh, something else additionally we could do. But I'm definitely open to discussion or what the feelings are of city council. Could, I, I didn't know if you had a follow-up. Yeah. If we just sat here and approved a bunch of festivals, 
to say we can't have a garage sale in a couple of weeks. I, I don't really know the answer to that. Okay, uh, Councilmember Kurtzwell. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, you know, it's gonna be kind of hard to tell the garage sales people that you can't have a garage sale, but you can walk down Lake Street and shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of people looking at cars. Um, I, I know that the people that do estate sales and, and, and garage sales, I had one last year myself, and that was before uh, the vaccine. And I'll tell you, I it was a steady stream, everybody, um, social distanced. I mean, I think people are pretty savvy about this. Uh, everybody who came to my garage sale last summer wore a mask um, when they were on my property. Uh, everybody social distanced. Uh, people waited in cars if there were a lot of people at, at, at my house, like, you know, because I had stuff all over. It wasn't just in the driveway. It was in the front yard. It was in the side yard so that everybody could social distance, you know, when they were garage sale shopping. People made it a point to sit in their car and wait until people left. So I found it to be a very, very responsible uh, group of individuals. And when you're garage sale shopping, you're not there for three hours. I mean, you're there maybe for 15 minutes and you're gone. And um, I, I just don't, I just don't see what the risk is. It's an outside event. Uh, nobody's inside and outside's where you need to be anyway. So I would just like to say, I, I think we move forward with the date because I know a lot of people are planning on it. So thank you. Yep. Council Member Kivel, did you have something? Go ahead. Yes, I did actually. Uh, much to that, that conversation, uh, I think people have their own common sense. If you feel uncomfortable, if you feel that people are not masked enough for your, your liking, you step away. The, the car show will be much the same kind of a thing. You don't go to, to places where people are rubbing against each other by a car. You go to the places that are open. And um, if it doesn't seem comfortable for you, walk away. So uh, on another light, Paul, I was wondering, have you found out anything further about the old uh, library building development that, um, you know, that you had selected? No, I haven't. I haven't gotten any additional um, correspondence from those individuals, but I will, I will let council know when I do. I've tried to make contact with them, but I've not heard anything back recently. So I don't, I don't know what the reasons are. I'm, um, I know that, uh, that you're the lead on this whole thing, but um, council actually, I feel is the ones that are really approving this whole project. So yes, I'd really definitely. like to have I'd like to have a lot more understanding of the information exchange and what what the um, criterion for the price points and stuff are. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. So, okay. all right, thank you very much. Council Member Dill, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just really quickly, just um, I wanted to um, see if we could close a loop on the, um, the people who came and spoke last at our last meeting, and they were very interested to find out if Laura had given us that 45 day notice about the um, the group home. And I just wondered if you happen to be able to look into that yet. And if you remember what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. And I believe Lisa, you can answer that about, I don't believe we received anything from them as of, as of that date. We have not received anything as of today. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Well, as a product of that information, um, is, is anyone feeling that we should try to be an obstacle to, to what's going on or what's being proposed, I suppose? It's not really our position as a city that we can actually do anything about it. I mean, if you choose to do something like that, um, the legality of that is something that should be considered. Maybe our city attorney can comment on that, but it's not something that is regulated by the municipality. As long as they follow zoning ordinances and sign and the signage, those items go before the state of Michigan. We are not not allowed to regulate that. My my concern actually is that we had a narrative that no one has any 
understanding of whether or not what was being said had any validity or not. So we're, you know, if, if anyone is coming to any kind of conclusions, I don't know how you're basing it on known facts. So um, that that caused me a little bit of concern. And to me, it, I'm getting much stronger a sense that they simply don't want to end up having the distraction of that at the end of their drive. Um, so um, I, I don't want us to end up being a vehicle that allows them to decide who gets to live by them. So. City Attorney Hamame, did you have anything to add to that or are we good to move on? No, I think Paul hit the nail on the head. We really don't have jurisdiction over uh, that type of home provided they meet the requirements in, in the law. Thank you for that. If Customer I could people. just say though, I, it does bother me that Lara has an obligation to give notice and they haven't bothered to do so. That That's really irksome. Yeah, I don't disagree. And it might not be a bad idea for us to reach out and, and get a status. It might be that it's still in the pipeline since I don't believe construction has started. I don't think people are moving in yet. So it might just be that they haven't sent it yet. I don't know that there'd be any harm with us reaching out to them, but I don't know that that's a basis um, to, to obstruct this, this home or at least a, attempt to interfere with it. I, I will say I've had occasion to be on Lara's site a number of times and it's not a very pleasant experience. So um, maybe they're just mired in stuff or maybe they're just not really good at exchanging information, I don't really know, but um, they are pretty clumsy with the, the <laughs> transmission of info. Anyone else with anything for the city manager this evening? Okay, great. We're gonna move on to council <clears throat> comments. Um, and council member Walton, why don't you get us started tonight? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I couldn't get myself off of uh, unmute there for a moment. Um, the only things I want to say tonight is, um, again, thank you to the police and fire department for their presence and taking care of their, our community and our uh, woman that they saved. And also, um, thank you to Ryan Lear for his cleanup efforts. We do appreciate that and hope to see people at the spring cleanup here coming up uh, from McCaddy Park um, or for the, the creek through McCaddy Park on the, what is that, the Saturday? So they're looking forward to that. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Wall. Well, Councilmember Richards, you go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to make a uh, first uh, a comment about uh, the upcoming cleanup. Uh, it's going to be on Sunday, uh, not Saturday. Um, and I'm hoping for a good turnout, but Larry hasn't got confirmation, I don't think, on quite enough people yet. Uh, over the past few years, be it, be it noted that uh, we often targeted a few spots that weren't necessarily in the Yerkes drain uh, area, okay, that were citywide, okay, but uh, they hadn't been attended to in a long time and they needed cleaning. Whether we'll get enough people to do all of this uh, this year or not, I don't know. I went and inspected a couple, three, about five places, and uh, Waters Edge Apartments, which is usually terrible, was perfect. It was beautiful, like it had been cleaned up and manicured uh, just a little while ago. It's usually very impacted with trash along the fence line there, and uh, so was Colonial Acres. It appeared to be very clean. Uh, uh, one of the worst areas I, I inspected uh, is uh, at the bridge there near uh, Hungry Howie's. It's always bad, but it's exceptionally bad this year. I hope we can really get the crew together and get in there. Um, but I, I'd help I help out with Larry uh, as best I can. And uh, I'm hoping for a good turnout this Sunday and hope for good weather. Um, uh, Next, I'd just like to mention, uh, I hope we can, we can have, uh, 
Oh, I don't know. I guess I guess I better cut it off at that. I, I'm not thinking clearly on it. I guess that's all I'll make a comment on. Thank you. All right, Councilmember Richards. Thank you. Councilmember Kurtzwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to thank all the hardworking employees of the DPW department for all the work that they do to help the city look great. I don't know if anybody has noticed, except for maybe me, <laughs> is that they've been in there trimming some of those really huge trees that really, really needed to be trimmed for about five or six years. Uh, some of those branches were just, uh, I would hate to think what would have happened if we had another uh, horrible uh, storm in the city. It, it, those, some of those branches were just horrible. They were huge, huge. And uh, the, so the park has been cleaned up and that's good. So I wanna thank them for that. Wanna thank them for getting the fountain running over in Paul Baker Park. It, it looks absolutely great over there so far this year. I'd also like to thank DPW for their assistance on the enlarged free standing frames that are throughout the city that were installed for the Culture Arts Commission for uh, Poetry Month. Uh, they're getting a great response. Once again, DPW is just the go-to department when uh, we need things done in the city and they do such, such a good job. Speaking of organizations in the city, uh, this is just, I, I just love getting this every quarter. This is from the Historical Society. And uh, this newsletter uh, features the American flag. And they just did a really, really, really good job in talking about the history of the American flag, giving some good trivia points about the American flag, the history of the flag. They just did a great job. And I would like to encourage everybody, my check's in the mail, um, to join the Historical Society. You know, it's only $10 for a single person or 15 for a family. You know, doggone it, come on people, let's keep our money in town and let's support our organizations. Uh, so this is just a great little uh, quarterly newsletter to get. I just love, love getting it. It's called the Witch's Chatter. So thank you to everyone uh, over there at the South Lion uh, Historical Society. So thank you, good night, everybody. We'll see you at the end of the month. Thank you, Councilmember Kurtzwell. I completely agree on the uh, quarterly newsletter as well. Uh, Councilmember Kennedy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, tonight, I wanna talk about the COVID vaccination event that took place at Colonial Acres on March 23rd through the 25th. During that event, 766 friends, neighbors, and relatives from our community were able to receive their vaccinations locally. It all began with a phone call I made to Ready Nursing Solutions after reading an article about the service they provided at Abbey Park in conjunction with the Oakland County Health Division. I asked if they would hold a similar event for the residents at Colonial Acres. A representative met Sue Brock and me at the location, verified it was appropriate, and said, we'll give you three days, you run it, you organize it, and we'll pass out the shots. And so tonight, I'd like to recognize all of the folks who made this possible. Many of the people I'm going to recognize actually volunteered for multiple assignments in order to make this a reality. First, I wanna thank the staff of Ready Nursing Solutions for their professionalism, kindness, and hard work during the event. Next, I wanna recognize the volunteers who delivered the flyers announcing the event to almost 1,000 residents in Colonial Acres. This group of volunteers included Alice Schmitter, Nancy Ward, Christine McNally, Frank Severn, Peggy Booker, Gary Kibler, Stephen Kennedy, Sarah Kennedy, Julie Kennedy, Bill Charles, City Manager Paul Zelnick, DDA Director Nate Mack, Evelyn Lawrence from the Water Department, Carol Brandon from City Hall, County Commissioner Phil Wipert and Pam Wipert, Council Member Glenn Kibble and Cindy Kibble, and Mayor Dan Pelchat and Meredith Pelchat. After the folks in Colonial Acres had registered, we contacted Kerry Cavanaugh at the South Lion Center for Active Adults in order to expand registration to other members of the community. She brought in volunteers to staff a call center and contacted folks to sign them up. And so I'd like to recognize the efforts of Carrie Cavanaugh, Interim Director at the Senior Center and her volunteers, Rita Allen, Kathy Campbell, Judy Christ, Sally Kinney, Sharon Loftus, Gail McDonald, Joe Regal, Joan Shifford, and Sue Talonin for their efforts. 
They not only signed up the folks for the event, but also recorded their information so they can be registered online later. Over at the Colonial Acres Clubhouse for phases one to four, another group of volunteers was collecting the forms from residents that did not have access to a computer and couldn't register online. This group of volunteers was led by Denise Marie and included Deanna Norwood, Alice Schmitter, and Anna Redmond. The information that was collected at the clubhouse and the senior center was provided to another volunteer, Julie Kennedy, who entered the information and registered all of those individuals online. During the same period, we had another group of volunteers reaching out into the neighborhoods and surrounding areas to sign up folks so that no appointment time slot was left unfilled. This group of volunteers included Council Member Lisa Dill, Council Member Glenn Kivel, Mayor Dan Pelcher, County Commissioner Phil Wipert, as well as myself. Once the vaccination event began on March 23rd, groups of volunteers staffed the event on various shifts throughout the three-day event. This group of volunteers included Mike Flores, Deanna Norwood, Jane Giordano, Mike Giordano, Denise Marie, Nancy Ward, Judy Keeling, Mary Poussard, Gary Kibler, Alice Schmitter, Laura Myers, John McGraw, Jackie Betke, Jane Severn, Karen Vassell, Bill Aldinger, Gail Newman, Jill Gardner, Connie Williams, Donna Tilly, Gloria Pointer, Katie Kay, Marge Stefanski, Barb Kibler, Anna Redman, Kathy Sturgowski, Jim Reuschlein, Stacy Clavin, Froya Derry, Janice Broyniak, Peggy Booker, Janice Lairs, and Dorothy Brown. And finally, I wanna recognize two additional volunteers. The first is George Birchmeyer, who managed the flow of people in and out of that building for three straight days, as well as managed the flow of cars in and out of the parking lot during that period. And finally, I wanna recognize Sue Brock. Sue volunteered to take on the huge task of taking the hundreds of phone calls and scheduling the appointments for all of those who wanted to be vaccinated. She also recruited many of the volunteers I have mentioned tonight and oversaw their efforts during that three-day period. Finally, I wanna recognize those folks in our community who provided lunch for the nurses and volunteers during that three-day period. This includes Jamie Gilbert for purchasing and Corey Bala from the South Line Hotel for providing and delivering lunch one day, Ray and Matt Klaus for purchasing and providing lunch on another, and finally, an anonymous donor who purchased lunch and Mike Carano and the Corner Social for providing and delivering it as well. Again, at the end of the three days, 766 friends, neighbors, and relatives from our community were able to receive their vaccinations locally. Not one time slot was wasted, and when the nurses were running ahead of schedule, I contacted additional folks from the waiting list and was able to add them to the schedule as well. At the end of the three days, not one vaccination shot was wasted. Mr. Mayor, I apologize for taking a, a bit more time this evening for my council comments than usual, but I felt it was important to recognize all of the individuals who made this possible, the majority of whom are residents of this city. It was an extremely successful community event and it truly makes me proud to call this community my home. Well, I have Mr. Mayor. You're Thank a you. rock star, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Kennedy. Um, Council Member Kivel, go ahead. I just wanted to say that I mean, you you just smoked that whole event. Oh, that was oh yeah, that was fantastic. Oh. Um, I'm when you brought up the idea of the senior center, I wondered, is there any potential for that to have any more legs where you might end up getting more uh, throughput to to use that building and that that architecture? If I could respond to that, just I have talked to the interim director. She is trying to schedule a similar event. She needs approval from about seven or eight people to get that authorization. And I don't think so that she has it yet. I know that there's still an awful lot of people that are really kind of grasping at straws trying to get, get a shot. So that would be helpful. But you, that was a great thing. Good, good job. Is that all you got tonight, Council Member Kibble? Uh, yeah, I think that's enough. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing people out. And actually, I do did want to say that it's fun walking around right now. Uh, you know, with spring in the air and um, the, the weather's turning, everything's budding up and you're starting to 
see an awful lot more activity going on outside. So um, COVID has really kind of kicked our butts for a bit to, to ruin our, our good times, but um, tomorrow is gonna end up being terrific. Every, we're gonna get through this and everybody's gonna end up make, making themselves whole and more. So um, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Kivel. Council Member Dill. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't wanna belabor the point, but I just wanna say that we do a lot of stuff um, on council that keeps the lights on and, and might seem boring to people. And there isn't that, you know, there, there's always, a, there aren't that many opportunities to really uh, make a different, like a, a huge difference in our community. And I just wanted to thank Steve, I mean, for stepping up and making that happen. That was unbelievable. And for, and I feel like you letting me call other people to give them, get them appointments. It made me feel so good. I, I was almost crying every time I talked to somebody. And these people afterwards came to, came to my house, called me on the phone. Thank you so much for getting me into this, um, uh, in, into this event. So I just wanna thank you for letting me be able to do that. Yes. So um, that was just a great event. We appreciated um, the help. And then I just wanted to, I also wanted to say, um, I, I've taken some walks around town and I'm really enjoying the poetry around town, taking pictures with that and posting it. And then the la very last thing is um, I wanted to call out our library because um, this is really interesting because the, our library and my company happen to do the same thing and we're in the same news article together. And uh, I just found it really interesting that um, during the last May when the, um, when the dam failures happened in Midland, um, it wiped out a, uh, a whole library for a uh, high school called Windover High School in Midland that uh, was a specialized high school that accommodates teens who experience homelessness, abuse, and neglect. Um, they lost everything in their library, all their books, and they called for donations, and they um, and our library stepped up and donated so many books to this library, delivered them up there. And this article, uh, it really went on and on about them for several paragraphs. So I just wanted to, to thank our library for making us look good. Yeah. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Doe. Uh, you know, I think it's just a great night for all of us to really just take a moment. And, you know, it's, it's an honor to be able to serve this community next to you, all of you. Um, it's an honor to work uh, with our first responders, our DPW departments, all these folks. These are, these are incredibly great people and they're a great part of our community. And um, I think there was a lot of um, fireworks in this meeting to bring that up uh, for all of us. And so, you know, I, I reminded us a couple of weeks ago that the weather's breaking. Of course, Michigan is gonna give us a little bit of a fight here until the, good, the real warm weather gets here. Uh, but I just want to encourage people to get outside, try and try and get active. And, and, and we do got to keep up the fight uh, for those of us that haven't been vaccinated or the folks that are looking to get vaccinated or, um, you know, it, it's going to take a team effort here to, to put this virus down. And, and it's obviously reminded us here that we're not out of the clear just yet. So, um, you know, it's an honor to work with all of you. I hope you all have a great week. Uh, with that, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Councilmember Kurtzwell. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Thank you all. Have a great night. Good night. Good night.